Hello, my name is Dora and I'm a flight stewardess with Singapore Airlines. Today, I'll be reading this book for you titled Lost in Singapore, written by Matthew Cooper and illustrated by Candice Fang. Let's begin. Do you recognize any of these icons in Singapore? Could this be Marina Bay Sands? That's right. Now let's meet Ben Wong. He had a parakeet. Sid was his name. He was cheeky but loyal, independent but tame. Sid was one of a kind and he made quite a sight. Though his body was green, his tail feathers were, that's right, they were white. Since Ben's childhood, Sid's egg could, their friendship had grown. But for Sid, there remained a desire to roam. You see, Sid liked the high life, and I don't mean champagne. In his dreams, he was soaring with eagles and planes. Bud and Boy were inseparable as they grew older. But while set on Ben's shoulder, Sid's plans became bolder. Then one day, down at Orchard, as the two took a walk, Sid flew off to join crows in a tree with a squawk. Now this wasn't a shock, as Ben knew that birds flew. But the crows headed skywards, and so did Sid too. Can you find Sid on this page? That's right. He's right over here. Come back, shouted Ben, his anxiety growing. And he wondered aloud, which way could they be going? Well, I'd say, said a man, from their angle of flight, it's the Botanic Gardens, a World Heritage Site. Then a granny explained as Ben started to run. You can get there by bus. Take the 171. On the bus, Ben calmed down till he got a surprise from the sight at the gardens that greeted his eyes. For an ocean of parrots had flown into play. There were 66 SIDS. That's not easy to say. Can you see the rest of the parrots? They're scattered all around. But as none had white tails, it was easy to see that the lawns were all sidless, completely sid-free. So Ben looked at the trees that his friend could be sat in, most of them labelled in English and Latin. He saw trees from Tahiti, not a palm like you'd think, but a chestnut, beside it a strangler fig, and an African sausage tree named for its fruit, and a monkey pot too, which he thought sounded cute. And a snake tree shade from a passing rain cloud. Does it bite you or squeeze you? Ben wondered aloud. But amongst all the branches were birds sat and hid, not a solitary parrot, and that meant no Sid. Then some kids in a group, there must have been 20, started talking about their adventure at Kranji. It stood out, said one girl, as the bird's tail was white, which is strange on a parrot, on land or in flight. But good luck or good fortune, the cab stand was cueless. To the wetlands, yelled Ben, after which he felt foolish. As they reached Kranji marshes, Ben leapt from the car, after paying, of course, and he looked near and far. Ben saw fiddler crabs fiddling, while mud skippers skipped, and a stalk with a worm in its beak tightly gripped. A kingfisher darting so fast that he missed it, and a black oriole, that's a bird, not a biscuit. Ben heard chirrups and singing from all types of owl, plus a weird spooky hooting, let's hope, that's an owl. But no parrots at all, not in view or well hid. Then it hit him. The zoo was the place to find Sid. 
Next, the sun was eclipsed, but it wasn't the moon. Need a lift? asked a man in a hot air balloon. When he got to the zoo, Ben surveyed all around for a snowy white tail or Sid's squawky talk sound. He saw monkeys and tapirs, some hippos, a shrew, a tiger, a wolverine, and some elephants too. There were gibbons in trees, meerkats standing on mounds, and a naked mole rat, not as rude as it sounds. Ben saw rhinos at play near a grazing giraffe and a cotton-top tamarind having a bath. He saw cobras and crocodiles catching the sun. There were hornbills and penguins, but parakeets? None. Then a chopper touched down by some tree kangaroos and the pilot jumped out saying, I've got good news. Sid's been seen by the airport near Terminal 3. I can help you to fetch him. Just hop in with me. But you know that I've lost him? Ben's chin hit the floor. Said the pilot, you're trending on Facebook and more. Changi Airport was busy with aircraft galore. Planes from all around the globe and of course, Singapore. Have you flown on a plane or are with Singapore Airlines before? Ben saw planes with propellers that spun round and round, next to new ones with jets that made barely a sound. And he stared for as long as his time would allow at a huge A380 that made him think, wow. He saw green planes and red ones with blue at the end and a few with white tails, but they weren't his dear friend. Ben was close to despair. He suspected foul play. And then he heard a kind voice, one that brightened his day. I just saw your pet bird. Yes, I'm sure it was him. He was chasing some sunbirds to pull out Ubin. Then the lady continued. Let me show you the way. We can go there by bumboat. We mustn't delay. Do you see how the lady is wearing the same uniform as me? Yes, she's a flight stewardess with Singapore Airlines as well. As the bumboat pulled in and they said their goodbyes, the kind lady remarked as she smiled with her eyes. If you ever need help, don't be too shy to ask. Ben said, thanks very much. You are truly first class. Then he looked for a bus or a taxi or car or some transport to help him to search wide and far. We use bikes on this island, said a man who seemed nice, and their engines are powered by noodles and rice. So Ben hopped on a bike and he pedaled his best as he covered the island from east side to west. Ben saw temples and villages older than time and some mangrove trees stood with their roots in the brine. Yet despite all the effort and furious pedaling, there was no sign of Sid and Ben's tummy was rumbling. If I'm hungry, thought Ben, then lunchtime must be near. And that's Sid's lunchtime too. And then came the idea. I have a question, said Ben, to a man who looked British. What's the best way to get to the East Coast food village? You must first take the bum boat, said the man drinking tea. After that, it's the train a.k.a. MRT. It was cool on the train as it zoomed underground, but Ben's head was a spin. Would Sid ever be found? As he ran by the food stalls so busy for lunch, Ben kept hoping at last he'd be right with his hunch. Now his nose was alive with mouth-watering smells from the chakwe tail and the laksa as well. Ben saw nasi lemak, and satay that looked nice, but there was sambal stingray and of course, chicken rice. There was chasu pao too, filled with barbecue stuffing, but no sign of his friend, not a dicky bird 
nothing. Then a girl on a bike that would not have been newer said, I heard you're a runaway parrot pursuer. You should look in the gardens, the ones by the bay. There's a great lookout point from its famous skyway. She continued, cheer up, as he can't have gone far. I can give you a lift if you want. Okay, la? When Ben got to the garden, so big and so grand, he felt like he'd arrived in a fantasy land. From his view on the skyway, so high and admired, Ben was breathless, and not just because he was tired. He saw trees made of metal and forests indoors, and a sign saying, otters cross here, mind their paws. He saw cafes on treetops and domes by the shore, plus some kids getting soaked under sprinklers galore, and a towering hotel like a massive surfboard, but no feathered thing airborne, no, nothing that soared. Poor Ben's fuel tank was empty, his batteries flat. Then a boy on a scooter said, hop on the back. We can scoot to the Malayan to look for your friend. You must stay optimistic when things don't look great. It's a case of perspective. You choose what you see. For example, that looks like a lion made to me. And in times of great panic, there's one thing I know. If you're missing a pet, then there's one place to go. But where is it? asked Ben. Which one place do you mean? Why, Sentosa, of course. It's a parakeet's dream. So Ben set off at once with his confidence in high. By Sentosa Express, that's a train in the sky. As the monorail stopped and Ben stepped from the train, he was met by a woman who walked with a cane. Parrots, my boy, I've just spotted a pair of them entering Singapore's great sea aquarium. Once inside, Ben looked up as Sid liked to perch high. Then an emerald flash in a tank caught his eye. Could they be Sid's green wings? It was all he could wish. But alas, they were skills on a green parrotfish. Ben saw squirrelfish, sea jellies, batfish, half grey, yet no species with wings but a sleek manta ray. He saw moray eels, clownfish, a hammerhead shark, but no parrots or macaws, not even a lark. As Ben's cheeks became salty from his tears, not the tank, he saw news on the TV that filled him with thanks. Breaking news, read the man, now Siloso's the scene, where a white tail's been seen on a bird that is green. Do you think that's it? There was no time to waste. Ben set off a trot. For the first time, he felt that Sid's trail was still hot. Now that's just an expression, but true for the beach. When Ben's feet touched the sand, he let out a loud screech. As he jumped in the sea, Ben let out a big, ah, and he looked up the shoreline, which stretched very far. He saw a night by a castle, at least in their dreams, and some kids on banana boats letting out screams. In the distance, a turtle, a pink dolphin too. So exciting to see them, but none of them flew. Ben saw beach sports like frisbee. What more could you ask? There was even a girl in a snorkel and a mask. Then a proud dad appeared with two cones in each hand. But he tripped on a ball and they all hit the sand. All around him, Ben saw beachy fun without end, but not even a hint of his fine feathered friend. It's not fair, shouted Ben as he dropped to his knees, barely feeling the weight on his arm or the breeze. From the flapping of wings as a bird took its perch, 
on its very best friend at the end of his search. You've come back, cried out Ben. Please don't ever take flight. But he saw Sid's eyes sparkling with traveler's delight. And Ben knew deep inside birds were meant to fly free and to soar through the clouds way above you and me. So the two made a deal, one that suited them both, and as hands shook with wing feathers, each made an oath. Sid would fly off sometimes as he couldn't stay put. He would always be plagued by an itchy bird foot. But each time he'd return before dark for a feed, sometimes sunflower or pumpkin, but always a seed. Ben was happy with this as he trusted Sid's word. As we say in this town, both were happy as bird. I hope you enjoyed this story as much as I enjoyed reading it to you. Once again, I'm Dora, a flight stewardess with Singapore Airlines, and I look forward to seeing you on board Singapore Airlines soon.